Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today what we're going to look at is LangGraph, Slack, and N8N to build a Reddit trend finder that you can actually use human in the loop to approve what you're interested in and have it post into an automation. With that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, we're going to look at how we can actually get uh, information that's coming out of Reddit specifically. So we're going to monitor uh, some of the top Reddits or Reddits that we've chosen and then scan the top posts and comments. And so we're going to use this thing called Reddit Radar. And what this does is this is actually from Langchain. Um, I just forked it and made some modifications for some specific things that, that I wanted uh, when, when working with this. So we're actually going to go through what this system is, how you can get it uh, spun up uh, the the readme is great so we're just going to kind of look under the hood and see what's what's going on but the idea is is that it goes out it finds what's trending and then it'll actually post back into your slack and so i wanted to take this a step further and then say based on what's actually happening in these trends uh take some sort of action and that action be the human in the loop and the reason for this is I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, there's so much data and information that's coming out. I want to understand, like, what are the things that I'm interested in and how can I send this uh, to others or just make it more actionable? So the first thing that we're going to do is once you clone this code down, we're actually going to take a look at the graph. And so inside the graph, basically what's happening is we're going to be using Anthropic and we have this configurables. And so these configurables are basically our default setup. And so you can see in here, they've hard-coded some values, but you can actually configure these uh, outside of this configuration. You also have the ability to have a user input, and so that user input is going to allow us to uh, have the configuration, but then also search for specific terms. And then based on that, it's gonna maintain state. So I also added uh, some things here, like I wanna know what the subreddit is, because I'm gonna have a lot of these running, and I wanna know what the Reddit ID is. And both of these play a part into the N automation, and I'm gonna show you how that works with Slack uh, blocks. So, then also you have your prompt file, and this is basically just the instructions of how to put everything together and some more utilities on how to actually get the Reddit posts, when are you going to filter, and uh, how to compile all that information together. Also inside the graph is once you gather all that information, you're actually going to post all of that back to Slack. And so the way that Slack works is essentially you have these things called blocks. And blocks are, it's still a single message, but it almost chunks those blocks into um, sections in your Slack message. So it's, it's really just blocks inside of a message, even though it, it compiles into one, one big message. And so you can have different sections in here like the title, uh, your the LLM's take on what's actually happening between the topics, as well as the comments that are being listed. And then it lists all the sources, so we can have like attachments to, the, to either be links or images, and we can even uh, put in the Reddit URL. So if we wanted to go directly to the Reddit URL, we could. The ones that I also added were the, again, the subreddit, and the Reddit ID, because I need to pull those out easily from the, the Slack message altogether. And so, as you can see at the very end, we're then gonna take whatever we find and we're actually gonna post it into a Slack webhook. And so let's take a look at what that, that actually does. So first things first, we're actually gonna run through this before we send it to Slack and see how this is actually working in our lane graph. So I've deployed it to my uh, lane graph platform or like the cloud and we're just gonna 
look at what's going on with DeepSeek. And so right now it's actually going through each node uh, on the graph in order to look at the information and pull that information back. And now it's starting to generate all the takes. So it's found about 20 different articles that you can, uh, that it, it saw and is pulling that information back. And it's also looking at users as well as comments, again, analyzing all this information. Now we're actually writing back to Slack and we've completed. So the other thing I just want to show you is our manual configurations are right here. You can also change these right in the UI. So if you wanted to look at number of comments or if you want to look at number of posts, if you want to change your uh, time frame, or if you want to change your locale or uh, sorry, your subreddit to um, Cool. So now let's actually, we can look at the, the traces themselves as well just to kind of see what's actually happening in our, in the background. So as you can see, it's making multiple different calls and the output associated with it as it's pulling back. And so even though we're getting all this information back, we're not necessarily going to use all this information in the Reddit uh, Slack message. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to see what we uh what we got in slack real quick everyone if you haven't already please remember to like and subscribe it helps more than you know also please go check out text yourself it's a simple application that i built that helps keep me on track all you have to do is sms different tasks and reminders that you need to be sent back to yourself with that let's get back to it all right so now that we're back in slack uh, you can see I have multiple different trends here. So GitHub, Hacker News, Product Hunt, and Reddit. And so what's happening is this webhook is actually posting these articles. And as you can see, these are the blocks, right? So now we have blocks inside it. Even though it's one single message, we have blocks that are in our uh, divided in our message. And so that becomes important when we actually want to do something in an automation. So this is kind of where the, the human in the loop comes in. So now let's say that I actually want to take uh, an article like this where I, I could definitely could just go to the source, but I could also trigger an action. Maybe uh, I want to send this to someone. Maybe I want to uh, post it somewhere. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a, another, another uh, trigger and automation on the fact that I can actually select an emoji and have it fire an event. And so in order to do that, we're going to use NAN and we're going to connect NAN to Slack and a bunch of our, our different uh, social media and actions. So before I actually select the emoji, I'm going to go show you how to test and how I have this uh, NAN set up. So basically what's happening and is we are going to trigger an event and that trigger is going to be on a reaction added. And right now you can see that I, I've had, I have this pinned. So what we're going to do is then we have to get all the Slack information. We're going to take a look at all the comments, figure out what the best comment is, and then parse all that information into, uh, into more readable text because right now, it is pulling all this information and you can see that there's a lot coming from the the github or sorry the reddit block the reddit comments and this is where it's important around the the blocks so not only are we getting the comments but we can actually go into the information from the slack itself and we can actually see individual pieces of the blocks. So if we want to specify our prompt, what we can do is look right here and see that this text is uh, what we want, which is separated from the summary that we're getting back from the Slack message. And this just makes it way more manageable 
to actually get all of this information. And so the reason that we needed to make our own blocks is in the Reddit section, we need to be able to grab the Reddit and the post ID. And so all of that information is actually coming from the Slack blocks. So if you look down here, this is where we're getting the uh, the subreddit in block eight and the post ID in block nine. And so by having both that information, then we're actually able to pull from the Reddit uh, API. Again, then we're gonna go and parse that information. This is actually where we're gonna use DeepSeq. So in the model itself, if you do a fixed expression and then you just sign up, uh, you use a, a normal credential, you just have to change your base URL in here. That's uh, essentially how you can use DeepSeq. And then what we'll do is we're actually gonna trigger based on the emoji, what, what, we, what action we want to have. So if we have a bird, it'll go to Twitter. If we have a thread, it'll go to uh, thread. Um, silhouette will be LinkedIn. We can do a speech balloon, <clears throat> or we can actually schedule this on a time. So another thing that we can do is if we want to specify things to go out at a specific time, we could use a specific emoji that would tell us, uh, for instance, a clock at one that you want to send this out at, uh, today at one o'clock, as opposed to waiting or uh, maybe even tomorrow, right? You could actually get the current time and then send it out in the, the, the UTC format. The other thing that you can do in any and end is you can actually set what your time zone is and then that way it makes it easier for you to schedule. So the next piece that we're going to go ahead and do is then once we trigger off of these things, we can actually send it to our end location of whichever way we want to go. And so let's look at how we can actually test this without it being pinned. So if we come in here and we click test step, we're going to overwrite our pin. It's going to start listening. We're going to come in here and we're going to say, uh, make a thread. And so now we have our thread. We're going to see that we got our reaction. We'll pin that, and then we can go ahead and just actually play this all the way through. And this is where we'll go and make a thread. And as you can see, it's going through and hitting our deep seek model. It's going to then eventually hit our switch. And then what we'll do is we'll actually see it come through the uh, thread. And so what's most of these are actually just chained together and then putting together a single post with the, the thread. What he actually did was we have a execute workflow trigger and then that will put together a object of tweets. And then we're going to go ahead and basically do a continuous loop of creating the, the first tweet, getting that ID and then passing it to the Twitter thread again. So this is essentially a loop. You don't actually have to, to have a loop um, node here. The way NNN works is it, when it sees an array, it's just going to keep looping through that object. Great. And so now it's been completed, and it's gone ahead and posted. And let's see what it came up with. Cool. And so here we are on uh, our Twitter page, which I haven't been as active in. This is another reason I want to have a automation. You can see that it's actually putting together a thread right here and that it was all the way successful. So again, all we did was we had LangGraph go through and find our Reddit information. We had the ability to come in here for a human in the loop and decide what we actually wanted to do with knowing more about this information, and then we were able to automate that through N8N. The other thing about this is, so right now we've only done one example, right? We've we basically uh, 
triggered this manually. So what if we want to actually trigger this on a schedule or a cron? So every morning I get up, I immediately go onto Slack. So this could just be a way, a part of my morning routine so that uh, I don't even have to think about it. So if we go back and we actually look at uh, the the API for our assistant on LangGraph, they actually have the ability to create cron jobs so that you can schedule your LangGraph to run every single day, every single hour, whatever. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up through Python Notebook. So the first thing that we would do is we'll come in here and we need to put in our URL. I actually just like making it automated. So I want to search for the uh, assistants and I'm going to look for the assistant that is created by the assistant or I'm sorry, the assistant that's created by the system. And then if that exists, I'm going to take that ID and I'm actually going to use it for the available crons that are are there. So I already have a cron set up it runs every morning. So this is how I'm able to actually search for those crons. And then I'm actually going to take this and create a new cron, right? So you can see here, I can actually change this around. So this configuration goes back to those defaults. We can actually override those defaults. So if I want to actually run this, but you don't actually need either one of these two. You can just do the configurable. So for the configurable, we can say that maybe our subreddit is ChatGPT, and instead of uh, looking at the, the default topics, we want to look at different use cases. We want to look at agents. Maybe we want to look at voice, or maybe we want a user-provided content, which we can just put in here, and we can just say voice agents, All right? And then when I run this, It'll actually set it up, and now I can actually see what crons I have available right here, and so I have multiple crons. As you can see, multiple different, see right there's the voice agents that we just put in. Now this will run every day uh, at 6 in the morning before I get up. All right, everyone, that's it for us today. What we went through was the LangGraph Reddit trend finder and the ability to connect to Slack as a human in the loop, and then actually trigger an N8N automation. We also added in DeepSeek as part of the model that we wanted to use for reasoning. With that, happy nerding.